Good morning, and welcome to the Sunday morning service of the Plainfield Christian Science Church Independent. Let's begin our service by singing hymn number 240. O Spirit, source of light, thy grace is unconfined. Dispel the gloomy shades of night, reveal the light of mind. Hymn number 240. will now be given by Imogene from Australia. The Bible, Psalm. The earth is the Lord's, and the fullness thereof, the world and they that dwell therein. For he hath founded it upon the seas, and established it upon the floods. Who shall ascend into the hill of the Lord? Or who shall stand in his holy place? He that hath clean hands and a pure heart, who hath not lifted up his soul unto vanity, nor sworn deceitfully, he shall receive the blessing from the Lord and righteousness from the God of his salvation. Lift up your heads, O ye gates, and be ye lift up, ye everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord, strong and mighty, the Lord, mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, O ye gates, even lift them up, ye everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord of hosts. He is the King of glory. We will now have a moment of silent prayer and follow with the Lord's Prayer and its spiritual interpretation as given in the Christian Science textbook.
our Father, which art in heaven, our Father, Mother, God, all harmonious, hallowed be thy name, adorable one, thy kingdom come, thy kingdom is come, thou art ever present. Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Enable us to know, as in heaven, so on earth, God is omnipotent, supreme. Give us this day our daily bread. Give us grace for today. Feed the famished affections. And forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And love is reflected in love. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. And God leadeth us not into temptation, but delivereth us from sin, disease, and death. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, for ever. For God is infinite, all power, all life truth, love, over all and all. Let's now sing hymn number 216. Oh, he who trusts in God's protection and hopes in him when fears alarm is sheltered by his loving kindness delivered by his mighty arm. If ye God's law can understand, ye have not builded on the sand. Hymn number 216.
Welcome to this Plainfield Christian Science Church Independent. This is our Sunday morning service for Sunday, June 25, 2023. We begin every Sunday morning here at 10 a.m. with our roundtable discussion, where we talk about the lesson for the week and how to practice better this wonderful science of Christian science. And we had a really good one this morning, so if you missed it, or if you'd like to hear it again, you can find it on our website, plainfieldcs.com, and you will also be able to find it on our YouTube channel and on our Vimeo channel. It's everywhere. We have a Sunday school for children that meets at 11 a.m., And that Sunday school has its own teleconference number, so that if you don't live in the area and if you have a child of Sunday school age, uh, your child can attend by telephone. And in fact, many of our students attend via teleconference. So please call us, and we'll be happy to give you the number and very happy to welcome your child to our Sunday school. We have a testimony meeting every Wednesday evening at 8.15, where you can hear testimonies of healings and lives literally saved through the study and practice of Christian science. And at all of our services, we have a nursery available for infants and toddlers. Our missionary work is carried out largely through many websites that we have Um, all but one of which are in languages other than English. This way, the, the pure truth of Christian science is reaching millions of people around the world, in many cases in their own language. And all of this is provided free of charge. There is nothing to purchase or join to get the benefit of everything that is on all of our websites. And we're very grateful for those of you who have found us on our websites. One of the uh, articles that is currently featured on our English website, I'd like to point out, is one that uh, is entitled, The Great Gift of God by Edward A. Kimball. I recommend it highly. Everyone is welcome here. And that includes all of you who are listening and participating from around the world. And now we will have the reading of a testimony from Science and Health with Key to the Scriptures, which attests to the healing power obtained by studying the Christian Science textbook. That reading will be given this morning by Wendy from Georgia. Grateful for many blessings. It is with sincere gratitude for the many blessings Christian Science has brought me that I give this testimony. I first heard of Christian Science about 15 years ago. A friend of mine was taking treatment for physical troubles and was reading the textbook of Christian Science, Science and Health with Key to the Scriptures. The title of the book appealed to me very strongly. I said to my friend, if that is the key to the scriptures, I must have it. I had long been a member of a Bible class in an Orthodox Sabbath school, but I never felt satisfied with that which was taught. There was something lacking. I did not understand then what it was. I purchased a copy of Science and Health and began to study it. I wish I could express in words what that book brought me. It illumined the Bible with a glorious light, and I began to understand some of the Master's sayings and tried to apply them. I had had a longing to live a better Christian life for many years and often wondered why I failed so utterly to understand the Bible. Now I knew. It was a lack of spiritual apprehension. I did not know at first that people were healed of disease and sin 
by simply reading Science and Health, but found after a while that such was the case. At that time, I had many physical troubles, and one after another of these ills simply disappeared, and I found that I had no disease. I was perfectly free. The spiritual uplifting was glorious, too. And as I go on in the study of this blessed science, I find I am gaining surely an understanding that helps me to overcome both sin and disease in myself and in others. My faith in good is increased, and I know I am losing my belief in evil as a power equal to good. The pathway is not wearisome because each victory over self gives stronger faith and a more earnest desire to press on. E. J. R. Toledo, Ohio. The lesson sermon for this morning can be found on page 26 of the Independent Christian Science Quarterly. Subject, Christian Science. The golden text is from 2 Timothy. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. The responsive reading is from Psalms. Teach me, O Lord, the way of thy statutes, and I shall keep it unto the end. Give me understanding, and I shall keep thy law. Yea, I shall observe it with my whole heart. Make me to go in the path of thy commandments, for therein do I delight. Incline my heart unto thy testimony, and not to covetousness. Turn away mine eyes from beholding vanity, and quicken thou me in thy way. Establish thy word unto thy servant. Behold, I have longed after thy precepts. Quicken me in thy righteousness. Carol will now read. I will read from the Bible. Jeremiah. Thus saith the Lord, Learn not the way of the heathen, and be not dismayed at the signs of heaven, for the heathen are dismayed at them. Daniel And in the second year of the reign of Nebuchadnezzar, Nebuchadnezzar dreamed dreams wherewith his spirit was troubled, and his sleep break from him. Then the king commanded to call the magicians and the astrologers and the sorcerers and the Chaldeans for to show the king his dreams. And the king said unto them, I have dreamed a dream, and my spirit was troubled to know the dream. Then spake the Chaldeans to the king in Syriac, O king, live forever. Tell thy servants the dream, and we will show the interpretation. The king answered and said to the Chaldeans, The thing is gone from me. If ye will not make known unto me the dream with the interpretation thereof, ye shall be cut in pieces, and your houses shall be made a dunghill. The Chaldeans answered before the king and said, there is not a man upon the earth that can show the king's matter. Therefore, there is no king, lord, nor ruler that asks such, a, such things of any magician or astrologer or Chaldean. 
for this cause, the king was angry and very furious and commanded to destroy all the wise men of Babylon. And they sought Daniel and his fellows to be slain. Then Daniel went in and desired of the king that he would give him time and that he would show the king the interpretation. Then was the secret revealed unto Daniel in a night vision. Then Daniel blessed the God of heaven and said, Blessed be the name of God forever and ever, for wisdom and might are his. He giveth wisdom unto the wise, and knowledge to them that know understanding. He revealeth the deep and secret things. He knoweth what is in the darkness, and the light dwelleth with him. I thank thee and praise thee, O thou God of my fathers, who hast given me wisdom and might, and hast made known unto me now what we desired of thee. For thou hast now made known unto us the king's matter. Then the king Nebuchadnezzar fell upon his face and worshipped Daniel and said, Of a truth it is that your God is a God of gods and a Lord of kings and a revealer of secrets seeing thou couldst reveal this secret. Then the king made Daniel a great man and gave him many great gifts and made him ruler over the whole province of Babylon and chief of the governors over all the wise men of Babylon. Matthew And Jesus went about all Galilee, teaching in their synagogues, and preaching the gospel of the kingdom, and healing all manner of sickness and all manner of disease among the people. And it came to pass, as Jesus sat at meat in the house, behold, many publicans and sinners came and sat down with him and his disciples. And when the Pharisees saw it, they said unto his disciples, Why eatest your master with publicans and sinners? But when Jesus heard that, he said unto them, They that be whole need not a physician, but they that are sick. But go ye and learn what that meaneth. I will have mercy and not sacrifice, for I am not come to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. And when he had called unto him his twelve disciples, he gave them power against unclean spirits to cast them out and to heal all manner of sickness and all manner of disease, and said, I thank thee, O Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because thou hast hast hid these things from the wise and prudent and hast revealed them unto babes. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you, and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. Then the Pharisees went out and held a council against him, how they might destroy him. But when Jesus knew it, he withdrew himself from thence, and great multitudes followed him, and he healed them all. And all the people were amazed and said, Is not this the son of David? But when the Pharisees heard it, they said, This fellow doth not cast out devils, but by Beelzebub, the prince of the devils. And Jesus knew their thoughts and said unto them, Every kingdom divided against itself is brought to desolation.
and every city or house divided against itself shall not stand. And if Satan cast out Satan, he is divided against himself. How shall then his kingdom stand? And if I by Beelzebub cast out devils, by whom do your children cast them out? Therefore they shall be your judges. But if I cast out devils by the Spirit of God, then the kingdom of God is come up unto you. And all things whatsoever ye shall ask in prayer, believing, ye shall receive. John, if ye love me, keep my commandments, and I will pray the Father. And he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever. Even the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him. But ye know him, for he dwelleth with you, and shall be in you. I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. These things have I spoken unto you, being yet present with you. But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance, whatsoever I have said unto you. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give unto you. Not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Second Timothy Continue thou in the things which thou hast learned, and hast been assured of, knowing of whom thou hast learned them, and that from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith which is in Christ Jesus. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, truly furnished, Unto all good works. I will now read correlative passages from the Christian Science Textbook, Science and Health with Key to the Scriptures, by Mary Baker Eddy. To understand God is the work of eternity and demands absolute consecration of thought, energy, and desire. All we correctly know of spirit comes from God, divine principle, and is learned through Christ and Christian science. If this science has been thoroughly learned and properly digested, we can know the truth more accurately than the astronomer can read the stars or calculate an eclipse. This mind-reading is the opposite of clairvoyance. It is the illumination of the spiritual understanding which demonstrates the capacity of soul, not of material sense. This soul sense comes to the human mind when the latter yields to the divine mind. Although this volume contains the complete science of mind healing, never believe that you can absorb the whole meaning of the science by a simple perusal of this book. The book needs to be studied, and the demonstration of the rules of scientific healing will plant you firmly on the spiritual groundwork of Christian science. This proof lifts you high above the perishing fossils of theories already antiquated 
and enables you to grasp the spiritual facts of being hitherto unattained and seemingly dim. Our Master healed the sick, practiced Christian healing, and taught the generalities of its divine principle to his students. But he left no definite rule for demonstrating this principle of healing and preventing disease. This rule remained to be discovered in Christian science. Christian science understood coincides with the scriptures and sustains logically and demonstratively every point it presents. Otherwise, it would not be science and could not present its proofs. It presents the calm and clear verdict of truth against error, uttered and illustrated by the prophets, by Jesus, by his apostles, as is recorded throughout the scriptures. Christian science and Christianity are one. How then, in Christianity, any more than in Christian science, can we believe in the reality and power of both truth and error, spirit and matter, and hope to succeed with contraries? Our master annulled material law by healing contrary to it. We propose to follow the master's example. We should subordinate material law to spiritual law. Two essential points of Christian science are that neither life nor man dies and that God is not the author of sickness. Christian science brings to the body the sunlight of truth, which invigorates and purifies. Christian science acts as an alterative, neutralizing error with truth. It changes the secretions, expels humors, dissolves tumors, relaxes rigid muscles, restores carious bones to soundness. The effect of this science is to stir the human mind to a change of base, on which it may yield to the harmony of the divine mind. Experiments have favored the fact that mind governs the body, not in one instance, but in every instance. The indestructible faculties of spirit exist without the conditions of matter, and also without the false beliefs of a so-called material existence. When we lose faith in God's power to heal, we distrust the divine principle which demonstrates Christian science. And then we cannot heal the sick. Neither can we heal through the help of spirit if we plant ourselves on a material basis. Science shows that material, conflicting mortal opinions and beliefs emit the effects of error at all times. But this atmosphere of mortal mind cannot be destructive to morals and health when it is opposed promptly and persistently by Christian science. Truth and love antidote this mental miasma and thus invigorate and sustain existence. Unnecessary knowledge gained from the five senses is only temporal, the conception of mortal mind, the offspring of sense, not of soul, spirit, and symbolizes all that is evil and perishable. 
natural science, as it is commonly called, is not really natural nor scientific because it is deduced from the evidence of the material senses. Ideas, on the contrary, are born of spirit. Divine science is absolute and permits no halfway position in learning its principle and rule, establishing it by demonstration. Christian science is not an exception to the general rule that there is no excellence without labor in a direct line. One cannot scatter his fire and at the same time hit the mark. To pursue other vocations and advance rapidly in the demonstration of this science is not possible. The elucidation of Christian science lies in its spiritual sense, and this sense must be gained by its disciples in order to grasp the meaning of this science. If Christian science takes away the popular gods, sin, sickness, and death, it is Christ, truth, who destroys these evils and so proves their nothingness. The dream that matter and error are something must yield to reason and revelation. Then mortals will behold the nothingness of sickness and sin, and sin and sickness will disappear from consciousness. The harmonious will appear real and the inharmonious unreal. One who understands Christian science can heal the sick on the divine principle of Christian science. And this practical proof is the only feasible evidence that one does understand this science. The power of Christian science and divine love is omnipotent. It is indeed adequate to unclasp the whole and to destroy disease, sin, and death. We will now have a moment of silent prayer for our world. now sing hymn number 298. The words of this hymn are by Mary Baker Eddy. 
Saw ye my Savior? Heard ye the glad sound? Felt ye the power of the word? Was the truth that made us free and was found by you and me in the life and the love of our Lord? Hymn number 298.
can turn any which way Envy and hate and distrust They're just fear holding sway It's true Darkness is absence of light Light's always there like the sun How are you shutting it out? It cannot be done without Turn to the light, let it shine upon your face. Everywhere you look, you will see a brighter place. You can't erase a shadow, there's nothing really there, just shadow. But by God's grace, can face the light It fills a space With light and energy And fills a time With timeless beauty And if you listen close You will hear the sound number 251. O word of God, most holy, O wisdom from on high, O truth, unchanged, unchanging, O light of earth's dark sky, we bless thee for the radiance that from the hallowed page, a lantern to our footsteps, shines on from age to age. Hymn number 251.
the scientific statement of being, and the correlative passage from 1 John, 3rd chapter. <clears throat> there is no life, truth, intelligence, nor substance in matter. All is infinite mind and its infinite manifestation. For God is all in all. Spirit is immortal truth. Matter is mortal error. Spirit is the real and eternal. Matter is the unreal and temporal. Spirit is God, and man is his image and likeness. Therefore, man is not material. He is spiritual. Behold, what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of God. Therefore, the world knoweth us not, because it knew him not. Beloved, now are we the sons of God, and it doth not yet appear what we shall be. But we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. And every man that hath this hope in him purifieth himself, even as he is pure. The Lord thy God in the midst of thee is mighty. He will save. He will rejoice over thee with joy. He will rest in his love. He will joy over thee with singing. Amen.